Hi, welcome to Mistake Man. I'm excited to share a special project. One of the reasons that this project is so special to me is that I am making available to anyone who wants it for free files that you can download if you want to make your own version of this project that you're going to see in this video. So stick around and watch this video to find out what this project is all about. At the end of the video, I'll show you the final product and tell you where you where you can go to download the free files to make your own version of this project. What I've got here is a papercraft model of an item box from the game Sonic the Hedgehog. These boxes are power-ups that you get through the game. Sonic jumps on top of the box, pops it open, and then gets whatever the power-up is inside. In this case, the one that's showing the face of the character on it is actually a, you know, a one-up. It gives you an extra life. When I first saw this model, I immediately thought, how fun would it be? Since it's really like a little television set, I thought it would be fun to actually light it, you know, to backlight the screen and have it glow. And it's even got a little red power light, so we could I, I could light that. I immediately started thinking of ways I could kind of spice up this model a little bit. So I found this model on DeviantArt, and the artist's name is Mike McDermott. It's been a few years since I downloaded this model, uh, but I did go back to this user on DeviantArt just a few days ago as of recording this, and the user account was still active. It was still there, but I didn't see this model available on the site. So I don't know if the artist has taken it down or it, I just didn't happen to find it. Um, so I don't know how available that's going to be. As you can see, the artist has provided multiple versions of this model with different screens for the different various items that you can get in the box as you play the game. We've got the one up, of course. In this case, here's the rings. Here's the invincibility stars. And then, and also a version of the kind of white noise static. Now in the game, when you're playing this, this screen is animated a little bit. It's It shows this image, but it also flickers. The image flickers between with between the image that you see of the item that's in the box and this kind of white noise pattern kind of flickers on and off across the screen. So anyway, I thought it was kind of funny that the artist provided a version of the box with just that screen. But that actually gave me an idea that I wonder if there's a way, if I'm going to light this, is there any way that I could make it actually flicker with the white noise pattern? And that idea just kind of stuck in my head. Like I said, I downloaded this model several years ago, and I've just kind of had it in my stash of models that I want to build. And just over the years, I kept coming back to this idea of how f cool would it be if I could make it flicker with the white noise static, but I didn't know exactly how to do that. Now I could build a version of this and actually put a little digital screen in here that displays that image and then flickers back and forth. That would obviously work, but I don't know how to do that. And I don't think I could really afford a little tiny custom like LCD screen or something. I certainly couldn't at the time that I found this model. Anyway, I didn't really want to go down that route because that seemed kind of obvious and and easy in the sense of, you know, it'd be easy to implement that if you could actually get the right components. Instead, I wondered, is there a way that I could do that analog rather than digital? So I thought about that for off and on over the years. Eventually, I thought of an idea that might actually work. And I thought it would be a good excuse to actually learn hobby electronics, something I'd wanted to do for a long time, but just never really, I don't know, never really jumped off the diving board on that one. And this seemed like the perfect project to actually try and do that. I had no idea if it was going to work or not, but I thought it would be fun at least to try. So I actually made it work. And I think the effect looks pretty cool. I'm going to shut this extra light off just so it doesn't ruin the effect here. I've got a little switch in the back that I can just turn this on. And it lights up with, the, in this case, I've got the invincibility stars on this one. And there it goes with the, the static screen flicker. 
or the, the white noise. So yeah, I got it to work. As you can see, I've lit up the power light as well. Let me show you how it works. So, like I said, it's got a switch in the back, just a small little toggle switch. Flip that down, shuts it off. The back panel just comes off. The switch, of course, is attached to the back panel and wired to the circuitry inside. Just powered by a nine volt battery. And then it's got a circuit board with all the lighting and uh, control circuitry for the blinking pattern. And also holds in the screen. And then the power light is just a little red LED that's back there. You can see. So that's actually attached into the, the paper model itself. You can see I've covered the inside surfaces of the box with with some aluminum foil tape just to light block it so that none of the none of the lights from the LEDs actually, you know, glow through the paper. They just come out through the screen where I want them to. And then this is how the screen works. I've got the screen here. And essentially, there's two layers of LEDs. There's a layer of LEDs back there that when they are lit, they are providing the backlighting of the, of the screen itself, so the, the, the screen image. And then those blink off, and then this layer of LEDs on the front blink on. And in front of the, the piece of paper that has the, the actual star image on it, there's another piece of paper uh, that's vellum, so it's translucent. And it has the, uh, the white noise pattern printed on that. And I've got that placed basically right in front of it. So there are two layers of paper right next to each other. And the idea is that since the, the image paper is immediately behind the vellum, the image can tr transmit through the vellum more or less unimpeded. Obviously, there's some, li some light loss to the individual pattern itself. But that effect is proof. Not very noticeable, especially on this image. I guess you can kind of see it around the yellow border where you can see there's little darker patches, right? That's from the the uh, the white noise pattern that's on the vellum. But then when I shut off the light behind it, now you can't see any light coming through that image behind it, but I shine light on the front of it, so all you see is the uh, white noise pattern coming off of that. And so... It doesn't look as good outside of the box as it does inside of the box because obviously you can the box cuts off the those lights that are on the side there and kind of frames it nicely. That's the basics of it. I did make this uh, so that the screen could be swapped out. I liked the idea that the original artist provided the option to do multiple screens, and so since the screen needed to kind of sit in between, it couldn't really be built into this part of the model because it has to sit in between those two layers of lights in order to function properly. So it had, you know, it had to be separate anyway. So I decided might, might as well make it so that I can swap out the images for a different image if I like. And so I can take this out and then there's kind of like a little, it's like a little photographic slide cartridge that I just custom built myself. There's a bit of uh, light blocking on the back so that we don't get a lot of light passing through the, the black portions of the image. It blocks that almost entirely, so it makes a, some nice contrast between the black and the, the blue colors of the rest of the pattern. But I've also got a version here that's the sonic head, sonic face image. And then you just swap that in. And then I've got this little piece here that kind of runs behind it and makes it holds it right up against those that front layer of LEDs. Kind of keeps the, the slide in place. So there's the sonic image. It's a little hard to tell with. It's a little harder to see. I think my battery actually might be getting low. It's been a while since I've installed the battery in here, and I think, yeah, I think it needs to be brighter than that. Let me see if I can find another battery. 
Okay, I swapped that out for a fresh battery, and that's much better. Anyway, there's the image of Sonic himself. So there's the circuit board that I built. I just built it on a prototype board. This is a, f a four by six centimeter prototype board. And the kind of the main components of this are, a, I've got a 555 integrated circuit right there. It's a 555 timer chip that actually controls the, the pattern of the blinking. And then a couple of transistors that act as the switches to turn the lights on and off. A capacitor to set the um, to set the frequency of the blinking, and then just a bunch of resistors, and it's all just kind of wired together. Not proud of this uh, soldering job. Like I said, this was a project that was my gateway into the world of hobby electronics, and so this is the first circuit I have ever built, and uh, you can tell it's really, really gross looking. Those joints are awful, but it works. And then I uh, made this little, I call it a caddy for my circuit board that, you know, helps me get the pieces in and out and puts everything at the right, in the right place relative to each other. I just scratch built this from some sheet styrene. I used a 3D modeling software to create the, the kind of the pattern for this. And then, like I said, just cut it out of sheet styrene and glued it together. That's got a spot for the battery. It's got a spot where the circuit board um, gets kind of slotted in and then it rests up to the right height on a little spacer down at the bottom. And then this front portion here is where the slide drops in. The image screen itself will kind of just drop in and it, it just holds onto it, kind of pinches it between those two layers. And then just in order to get this to line up exactly where I where I need it. I ran, uh, cut some holes there and then I just used a cotton swab, cut off one end, well, both ends really, but I left a little bit of the cotton on this one end just kind of act as a stop. And it just fits through the hole and it goes behind it just to, like I said, keep the, because the, the, because these LEDs on here on the front have to be right in front and they tend to push the screen back a little bit if this that that stick is not in place and so that's why that's there so anyway as you can see i kind of took this simple little paper craft model to a whole different level and i'm really pleased with how this turned out really proud of it i built this model back before i was before i had a youtube channel and was doing any videos like this and so i don't really have any documentation of how that worked or anything but but I do want to showcase it here on my channel just because I think there might be other people out there that want to build one of their own. And I'd like to make that possible. I don't know if this model by the original artist is still available. Like I said, I looked and I couldn't find it. So instead, I decided to make my own version of the papercraft model so that I can make it available to you. I can distribute it. I have, have no rights to distribute this model from the original artist, so I won't do that. But if I make my own paper craft model of this Sonic item box, then I'm free to do that. So I designed my own version of the model, and I didn't want to just rip off the original artist. Like, this is this is their work. I don't want to just steal it and kind of pretend that it's my own. I wanted it to be my own thing. The original artist tried to make this, I don't know, kind of a little more realistic looking, where we've got the rounded corners, and there's like fun little vent slats on the side and then on the back we've got just kind of like this you know warning labels and and what you see if you looked at the back of an old uh, CRT television right which is great I, I love this little model it's it's awesome I really enjoy pixel art and I love just the whole pixelated nature of the 16-bit Sega Genesis and the Sonic the Hedgehog games that were on that system, that console. And I just, I just love that pixelated look. And I thought, how fun would it be to actually do like 3D pixel art? I could make a pixelated version of this item box as a paper craft model. So I set about designing that and I like what I came up with. So let me show you. During the process of designing the 3D model, I had to print one out and do a test build just to see what would work and what wouldn't, things I might have to tweak here and there to make it 
buildable and, and feasible. And this is what I came up with. As you can see, it's obviously a, the pixelated version. And really, I, I looked at the, took a screenshot of the original game and looked at where the actual pixels were. And this is a one-to-one -one match of what the pixels are. And as you can see, if I compare it to this, it's bigger, quite a bit bigger. And the reason for that is when I looked at the layout of the pixels, if I tried to make it this size, the pixels were going to be about two millimeters across, which I thought was probably a little bit too small to be able to build out of paper. So I bumped up the scale a little bit. I didn't want to go too huge, obviously, but I bumped it up so that each pixel is three millimeters instead. And that put it within the realm of constructability. As you can see, those are kind of the individual, those would be the size of individual pixels there. And they're, they're still small and a little tricky to work with, but they're definitely doable. So yeah, I, I built this out and it works pretty well. It gave me a few opportunities to optimize the design of the inside for use with the internal components. Where on here, I, di I did make some modifications to the original. I made this little extra structure to kind of put the, the screen at about the right height and to keep it from sliding around side to side. So that little kind of metal podium shape, I guess, just lines up with the slot in there and that keeps it centered. But building this was kind of a pain and it didn't really work all that well. I mean, it worked, but there were definitely ways could it could be optimized. So I took the opportunity since I was just designing this thing from scratch to go ahead and do something that worked a little better. And so I built up just a, a bigger platform that the board caddy can rest on. And then for centering it, I added little rails to the inside on either side that just keeps the, the caddy pretty much right where it needs to be without, you know, having it rock back and forth, which is what it tended to do sitting on that thing. It just kind of rocked back and forth. It wasn't very well supported. And then I also added this little catch on here to keep it. So if you pick up the box and, you know, lift it up, the, the board caddy doesn't just slide back against the back door, the back panel. And another thing I fixed was the back panel itself on this design. I didn't really like what I ended up doing here where I just cut the back panel off and gave it some flaps to kind of hold it in, which didn't really work that well. It tends to just pop out on its own. It doesn't hold it in very well. So I built this kind of box structure around the back frame. And then for the back panel, I just did a, a flat plate and then, or, you know, a flat sheet, and then built up a rim that goes around that just slides into that. And this version that I built here was a little bit too big. It doesn't fit all that well in there. It tends to jam up. And so that's one of the reasons I build the prototype is to see what works and what doesn't. This is one of those things that didn't really work that well. So I adjusted the, the design so that it's a little bit smaller so it should fit in there a little better. And then for the base, this is the, the bottom part of the base. I just, I didn't build the whole base as a prototype, just part of it, just to kind of, again, proof of concept, make sure it was gonna work. And this is the, is the new version of this piece down here. Just pixelated. And then there's gonna be two other pieces where the original just has one big cylinder that goes in between if you look at the 3D model, it's got actually kind of two sections of the, looks like the, the cylinder is kind of just, just above this piece. And then between the cylinder and the bottom of the, the box itself is another piece that's there. So I've got two that'll go together like that. So anyway, that's, that's the gist of it. Um, that's the prototype that I built. And I did, like I said, made some tweaks and changes here. As you can, 
you can see here's my notes that I took from, from the, these are the sheets I cut out the pieces for this first prototype build. And as I was going through, I made notes of what needed to be changed and kept all my notes on there. And I've since incorporated all of those into the actual 3D model and printed them out on this paper that I'm actually going to build this from. So I'm going to build this out of, instead of a printing actual color on white paper, like an actual colored thing, like the original design here, which is, on, this is how most paper, paper craft models are, right? You've got a, a, an image or a texture that's applied onto the parts and you just print it on white paper. The majority of this box is really just gray. And so I'm just gonna print it out on gray paper. And then when I fold all this stuff, I'll fold it so the line, the black lines are on the inside. So what you'll see outside is just gray. And I think, I think I'm gonna like that look. So like I said, I wanted to make this my own. And so I made this slightly bigger version that's got the pixelated look to it. So building my version of this is obviously much more involved than just the original. The original is really simple, really easy to build, and it, it's great that way. What I've done to it is obviously much more complicated where I've got a customized circuit board that the components themselves, there's nothing too crazy going on here. Pretty simple components, but you know, there's there's a bit of work involved in, in recreating something like this. And all of the customizations I made to the model itself are an extra degree of complexity I've added into it. Plus the little board caddy is an extra level of complexity. So this is one that I actually 3D printed. And this is the you know the right size for the new build, so it's bigger than the original one. And it fits in here nicely. And then for the lighting circuitry, the nice thing about upsizing this is it gave me a little bit more room on this board. This is a four by six centimeter prototype board here. And I was able to get everything to fit, but it was a little challenging to fit it all in there. But going up to this size, um, I did size all the internals and everything for being able to build the circuit on a, a prototype board that's five by seven uh, centimeters. Let's see there, down at the bottom, five by seven centimeters. But um, the, the challenge with doing it like this is that there's no connection between the holes, right? So if you put a component in, you still got to connect it up from one component to the other. As you can see, I've got wires running between spots and that's where the majority of my mess was on this version was just connecting the different components together with wires. And that's definitely the most challenging part of building your own custom board like that. Um, but I've also gone a little bit crazy on this and I decided to try my hand at do designing a custom printed circuit board or PCB. And so I've never done that before but it looked like something that could be kind of fun to learn. And so I decided to give it a try on this project. And so I've got a custom PCB layout. I don't have the printed circuit board yet at the time I'm recording this portion of the video, but I have ordered it and it's being manufactured right now. And I expect it to be here in about a week. That's what I'm gonna build for this video is the, the version with the PCB. I'm not gonna do another custom board like this. Uh, like I did for the original. The PCB just slides down in. So it's really the same construction as the original Caddy. Just I tweaked a few things that, you know, I could make things a little bit better that I learned from doing the first one. So it's just basically got a slot that runs down the back here that holds the PCB or the, the board in. So that drops in. And again, it's got a little bit of a spacer to hold it off the, the ground just so that it's at the right height relative to the actual screen here. And then I've got uh, just a little piece here that's going to represent the slide. I don't have the slide created yet for this size. The original ones I have are the smaller version. But this is going to be the size of what those are going to be printed out as. And that just slides in. There's a, there's a bracket, a slot at the top here and then down at the bottom. So it grabs it on the top and the bottom. 
and holds that in place just like that. And the reason it grabs it only at the top and the bottom rather than all the way down is because we've got to have room for those lights that are on the side to be able to shine their light inwards across the front of that screen so that it uh, does the whole white noise effect. And that's one major difference, that one major change that I made from this original design. The original design had all of these individual three millimeter LEDs that I basically just had the leads come up and then bent them over. And that really kind of determined how far away that screen was. And so the original slides, screen slide had to go in behind those and they had to be a part of the board itself. But I, there were aspects of that that I didn't really like. And so I tried to come up with a different way of doing that. And so my thought is here to, instead of using a whole row of small LEDs like that, instead use one of these little LED filaments. And these are the sort of thing that you'll find inside of a light bulb, like this one here. This one just has one. Sometimes you'll see ones with two or three or four or whatever. That's what these are. Now these ones I didn't actually pull out of a bulb. The, I just bought these uh, standalone as, as is in a little pack. These are three volt bulbs. You gotta make sure you get the kind that are uh, DC low voltage bulb filaments instead of like, you know, one that you might buy at like the hardware store or something, which is designed to plug into your, designed to plug into, you know, a light fixture on your ceiling or whatever. Those are going to be one, 120 volt AC bulbs. And the filaments are going to, and the circuitry is going to be designed for that. Those won't work for this particular setup here. We need low voltage DC setup. So that's what these are, um, particularly three volts. So the idea is to still have two of them, so I'd have one on each side, and then bend these, bend these tabs over and over and around. I'll probably, and then solder wires on, I'll probably just run the wires up and they'll kind of plug into the back of the board here. And then just use a little bit of hot glue or, or some kind of glue just to kind of tack those in place. And then one of the, another thing that I didn't particularly like about my original design was having that power LED just glued into the case and then having a wire run back to the board. So now I can't really pull the board out separate. It's connected to the hat, to the, the box itself and to the back panel. I still have the switch on the back panel and I don't think there's really much we can do about that there's still so there's still going to be wires connecting the back panel to the board but to get rid of the this particular situation with the power light i decided to i decided to design a bracket into the 3d printed model for that led and that's just a three millimeter uh, red led that goes in there and then also through the top of the board here i put in some spots where you can drill a hole through the bottom so that you can run the power wires from that light up through the hole and then into plugging into the board. The circuit that I'm using for this design is almost exactly identical to this original prototype circuit with just a couple of exceptions. The major exception is instead of using this series of uh, three millimeter LEDs for the the front layer of light, I'm going to be using the filaments. And then another exception is I swapped out the value of the capacitor to try to make it blink at a faster rate. But because I did make some changes to it, I did want to lay it out on a breadboard to make sure that the changes that I made are going to work. Here's the, here's the schematic for the circuit as it is in this latest version and a PDF of this is available for download. So here's the prototype. Let's give it some power and turn it on. It 
So here you can see this array of LEDs, there's 12 of them, are going to be the ones that end up in the plane behind the main image of the screen. Those are the ones that are going to light up the image. And then instead of this front plane being the individual LEDs, I'm using the filaments here. So you can see I've got two of them, so one for each side, and they're being pulsed by the timer circuitry. And then that other change that I mentioned was I swapped out the value of the capacitor. I did want to run the blink rate a little bit higher than I did in the original prototype version. If you watch the, the blink rate of the actual item boxes in game, they are much faster. And I didn't really want to build it to blink that quickly. That's a little bit too frantic for what I want here. And so I definitely wanted to tone that down. And I think I did a tone it down a little bit too far on this version of my original prototype. It just blinks a little bit more sedately. I wanted to up that a little bit, so that's what I've got here. I think this is the blink rate I want to go with. It's about twice as fast as it used to be, so let me show you that. Oh, I've got two batteries, so I can just hook them both up at the same time. One of them's losing its juice, but it's good enough for demonstrating here. So here's the blink rate on the original. Quite a bit slower. Here's the blink rate on the new one. It's about twice. It looks like it's maybe a little bit faster than twice the frequency on the new version. I think I like that better. Okay, the box is done. <laughs> looks pretty cool with a little pixelated design. I really like it. And then I've got just the supports finished on the inside. So let's grab that board caddy here. I've still got the, the mock-up version of the slide, just so we can kind of see where that's going to fit relative to the front screen. So yeah, that keeps board caddy from sliding side to side too much and then the little tab there keeps it from coming back out that's gonna be great and we get our install our back panel We've got ourselves a little box next up is to build the screen image slide so there's a complete slide and when it comes time to install that in the board caddy, there's our box with the screen image in place. Now all we have left to do is uh, set up the electronics. So this is what I did to lay out the actual printed circuit board. This is the back of the board, essentially what's facing out the back of the, the item box. And then this is the front of the board where you will install the LEDs that will face towards the screen, the front of the item box. I have got the printed version of my circuit. It's arrived. You should see that it looks pretty much the same as what I showed in those uh, wire trace diagrams. Okay, I'm going to solder on all the components. Okay, the board is built. Now I just need to test it, and uh, hopefully, hopefully everything works. I have to test my whether all my connections are right. I put the components in the right way, and in the right place, and. Also, to test my PCB design, this is the first time it's ever been run, so hopefully I didn't uh, screw up the design. Okay, so I've got a couple cables here that I've started putting some connectors on. So there's my switch, battery clip, so let's get those hooked up. OK, 
Okay, here goes. Now I don't have the other uh, power LED or the filament LEDs hooked up, so but these should still do their blink cycle. Okay, nothing's happening. Oh, there it goes. Okay, uh, I don't know what that was. I guess one of the connections is loose. There we go. Oh, yeah, and it just blinked off. So, okay, so I've got some connections issue issues. Not sure. Okay, looks like it's an issue with my battery cable. I'll have to debug that. Okay, I got it fixed. It was just a, one of the solder connections I didn't finish. I'd forgotten one of them, got distracted, and only done one side of it, so it was an easy fix. Okay, so I tested this by dropping the board into the caddy and then dropping the image, the screen image slide in. And that's a little hard to see. There we go. It's it's a little bit spotty, the light. You can tell there's bright spots directly where the LEDs are. It's more of a problem with this one than it was with my original one, just I think because it's slightly scaled up and the spacing between those LEDs is a little bit bigger. But also, I do remember that on the original prototype, I had gone through and sanded the tips of these LEDs to scuff them up a little bit just to help scatter their light a little more instead of having them being more like straight narrow beams coming out, which is really this type of lens on these LEDs is, is designed to do that, to kind of focus the light into a narrow beam. And by sanding those off, it tends to just diffuse the light a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and see how much that affects it. I don't know if you can see on the back one here, I've started a little, you can kind of see that it's just a little bit more diffuse, scuffed up there. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these and see how it does. Okay, I've got all the other lights hooked up. Let's turn it on. There we go. Got the red power light. And here's our two filament LEDs doing their alternating blink. For the filament LEDs, I just had one of these uh, pre-wired connectors and then on each end I just soldered it on. The filament LEDs come with these little straight tabs off the end. And when I soldered them on, I, be I bent the tabs so that they would be going backwards because I want to be able to install these lights right here at the sides of the caddy. Following, there's a couple little dips, some little grooves that are printed in. You can kind of see where it dips down right there and comes back up right there. Let's give you an idea of where this needs to go just so it lines up with the screen. So I wanted those wires to be coming in and soldered onto those tabs. So I bent the tabs over, but you really have to be careful with working with these because these filaments are very fragile. They break very easily. And in fact, in bending one of them, I did end up breaking it. They're made up of just like a, a thin stick of plastic that the the diodes are mounted onto and the plastic is, is brittle and it's covered in this, uh, I don't know, this jelly-like stuff. It's like a plastic jelly, I guess people, I guess normal people call that rubber, right? But it's a very soft rubber 
and really doesn't give it much strength at all. So yeah, just trying to bend those tabs was enough to crack that and then it eventually just broke off. So now all I really need to do to finish installing the electronics is to glue these filament LEDs in place. I'm just going to use some hot glue. Okay, got the filaments glued on both sides. And then I've also glued in the power light down below, run it through that hole there. Okay, there it is all packaged up, all nice and cute in its little caddy. Let's drop the screen image slide in. And turn it on. The static screen is a little hard to see when you can also see the the lights that are trying to illuminate it. They just kind of drown out your eyes so you don't really notice what's happening there. But I did also sand the tips of these LEDs, like I said, to help diffuse their projected light onto the back of the screen image. So it doesn't look quite as spotty as it was before. Yeah, I think it looks a lot better than it did. <laughs> okay, so I have managed to get this far without really having any problems with this design. But now I've gotten to a point of a fatal flaw in the design. Now that I've glued on these uh, lights on the side, it no longer fits into the box. There was really just enough room. I thought there was enough room for some wires to come off of there, but and for it to still slide through, but yeah, it's it doesn't fit. So this is not going to work. I think what I'll have to do is I'll have to run these wires on the inside. There's enough room instead to have the, the wire go through of maybe a hole in the plastic here and then down here and that'll get them behind the screen slide. And then there's space here that I can run the wires. Well, the top one I can run down, the bottom one. So there's a nice little gap there. I can run the wires underneath and then up to their connectors. Okay, so after getting everything wired up and doing some testing, I noticed that the lighting was not really well balanced. The panel of lights behind the screen image was much brighter than the lights that are along the side here that illuminate just the white noise image in front of the screen. And so it didn't really look right. It just looked like you couldn't really see much of the static white noise effect. All you could really see was just, it looked like the main screen was just dimming, blinking out. So I adjusted some values of the resistors just to tone down the brightness of the screen image lighting and to bump up the brightness of the side lights. So you'll see for these resistors on the front lighting, they are marked on my board as 10 ohms, but I swap those out for 100 ohms and that dims them down just enough to I think be in a pretty good balance. The light, and then for the lights that run along the side here, the resistor that controls the brightness of those lights is this one right here. And on my board it says 47 ohms, but I swapped that out just for a zero ohm resistor. So it basically just passes through there. So let me show you what that looks like. I think that gives a much more balanced look. It doesn't really look like it's blinking out. It looks more like there's just static flickering in front of it. One final note is you might be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it through there. There's some light bleeding through the side from those side lights. 
they're essentially right up against that paper and you can see it bleeding through. You can see it a tiny bit on the top, but honestly, that's really not very noticeable. Okay, there's the plastic panel on the side there, and then the other one on the side here. Much better. Okay, last thing left to do is get the back panel on. Okay. And there it is. These are the parts I created for the 3D printed version of this model. Got the main box itself, the back panel, the stand, the very base of the stand. Um, this is the part that goes between the bottom of the box and onto the stand, like that. And then the front bezel. And there are two versions of the front bezel. This is the one for Sonic 2, where it has the uh, power light on this side and these little tiny details that are recessed in. There's also a version for Sonic 1 that I haven't printed, but it will not have these recessed details and it'll have the power light on the opposite side. Other than that, it's identical. The screen image slide is the same, whether you're doing the 3D printed version or the paper craft version. So here are the finished Sonic item boxes. Here's my original prototype. Here's the paper craft version of the new design. And here's the 3D printed version of the new design. If you want to build one of these yourself, then check out the link that's in the description of the video. You can download all the design files and the instructions for free. You'll find parts and instructions for building either the papercraft version or the 3D printed version. This video has been more about the conceptualization and design process for this project. If you're interested in building one of these yourself, I'm going to put out a, another video really soon after I release this one that's really focused on giving you instructions for the, the build process for both the papercraft and the 3D printed version. So you'll definitely want to check out that video. There is a link in the description to take you directly to that video so you don't have to go search for it. I honestly have no idea if anyone will ever build one of these, but if you do, why not leave me a comment? Let me know. This has been a really fun project for me and I'm just grateful that I could share it with everyone. But that's it for this one, so see you next time.